If you were in a boat after dark and saw someone walking on the water, how many of you would be terrified? Let's see, raise hand. Just about everybody here. There's a couple brave souls in the back who wouldn't be terrified. I want to hang with you. <laughs> Our gospel lesson is filled with miraculous signs and wonder, even some that aren't really apparent, like how do you get 5,000 people to just sit down and listen? 5,000 people. It's a miracle in itself because we can't get all of the people in this building to sit down and pay attention at one time, let alone 5,000. Um, before I go any further, at 8 o'clock, there was a fly in here messing with me. He's still doing it. He just buzzed my head. And when I'm over there, he really acts up. The 5,000 people sitting down in itself is a miracle. I guess we'll just have to start doing some spectacular feats of signs and wonders each week to get into that practice. But even if we were to accomplish great feats of life, would anybody believe it? And if they did, would we have to run and hide for fear of them wanting to make us a king or a queen or some kind of grand poobah like in the Flintstones? How many people remember the Flintstones? Yeah? A cartoon from the 1960s for some of the younger people in the room who may not know it. There was Fred and there was Wilma and Barney and Betty and let's not forget Oh, smoothie. But Jesus is no grand poobah of a secret society like in the cartoon, but he is the author of our salvation and the master of glory, leading us and others to live a life free of worry and full of prosperity in all of its forms. You know, when we set our trust on Jesus and all of his teachings, we can achieve magnificent things. I once recall a program many, many years ago called In Search Of. Some of you may remember that program. It was starring Leonard Nimoy, you know, the guy with the big pointy ears. Spock, you may know him of. One of the episodes was about this 18th century Latvian American fellow named Edward Leeds Callan, who supposedly built with just hand tools this homestead made out of giant limestone blocks as a tribute to his sweet Lorraine, a mysterious woman he adored. But what was so unique about this structure is that the blocks were so massive and to cut such precision that it is considered one of the greatest signs and wonders of our time, much like the pyramids of Africa. Because at that time, there was no technology to cut such precision blocks. It was said that he would only work when no one was around and would stop if he even sensed someone coming close, perhaps for fear of what others would do. He, like Jesus, understood the power such as that in the hands of non-believers could cause havoc in our world. The place that he built is called Coral Castle, and it's in Homestead, Florida. It's a magnificent place. I went there some years ago, and it is spectacular. If you ever get the opportunity to go there, please go and, and look at the marvel that was created. It reminds us that even today God is working wonderful signs and wonders among us through unsuspecting people and will continue to do so throughout our lives. I think it's important that we take a moment from time to time to think about and to acknowledge some of the things in our culture that we once thought were impossible to achieve. 
but with God's help and work through others, have occurred. On July 29th, 50 years ago tomorrow, right in our neighboring city of Philadelphia, the Philadelphia 11 were ordained as Episcopal priests at the Church of the Advocate in Philadelphia. Eleven women were ordained in the Episcopal Church on that day. Up to that point, many churches wouldn't even allow females to serve as acolytes or lay ministers in worship services. I know that because I was born in the 60s and I was an acolyte. And my sister, who was older than me, was mad because she could not serve on the altar alongside her brothers. But after that day, she was up there with us, getting on our nerves. <laughs> Today, we honor those 11 brave women who persevered and broke those barriers which prevented women from taking their rightful place in this church. A miracle of sorts. Doing what has been impossible to do. I guess it's like walking on water, building a mega monument by hand, or doing extraordinary things we have never seen before. I call it a Jesus initiative. Because Jesus encourages us to do even greater things than he did. It sounds impossible, doesn't it? But we must be able to do it, otherwise he wouldn't have told us that we could. It's something to think about. What can we as Christians do that has the impact of feeding 5,000 from a few loaves and two fish? For years, people have been telling us that we are somewhat limited because we only learn to use 10% of our brain. Has anybody else heard that? 10% of our brain. Well, that myth has finally been put to rest with the wide-scale use of the MRI machine. You know that MRI machine that we go and get tests on? Through that machine, we can actually see our brains working in real time. We use 100% of our brains, but not necessarily efficiently or focused. And according to Jesus, focus is what is needed. Focus could have kept Peter continuing to walk on the water towards Jesus without falling in. Do you remember that story? Peter... Why have you doubted? But his thoughts turned to doubt and fear, which is not focus, but distraction. For both Jesus and our Latvian American friend Edward understood the benefit of focus, a sustained moment of intense concentration. Some may call it meditation or prayer because it transforms the impossible to possible. Yes, Jesus is Lord, capable of all that is impossible and hard to understand. So when we're having those days where things aren't really working out the way we want them to be and we need to be able to do something miraculous like walk on water, but we don't know how. Remember our friend Edward. Remember the Philadelphia 11. And yes, remember Jesus. Focus and pray is the key. Amen.